Through everything you face in life, stress and joy, confusion and gratitude, comfort and distress, look to the Lord and start building a habit of seeking Him with Closer to God Each Day, 365 Daily Devotions. This year-long devotional will help you build up your spiritual strength. A few moments can transform your day. A daily habit in God's Word can transform your life. There's something really, really important that sooner or later you need to know about life. And that something is this. There is always something. (laughs) Like in your life and in my life, in a good life or a bad life, there is always, always, always going to be something. When you get older, there's going to be something. If you could rewind back 15 years, you'd remember there was still something. If I could double your income or cut it in half, there'd be something. You could date this person or that one. You could stay married. You could get divorced. You could get the job or you could lose it. It doesn't matter where you live, who you are. On this side of heaven, this fact is going to be true. There's always something. Always. Because if, if we want to grumble, we'll always have a reason to. And if we want to be grateful, we'll always have a reason to. So you and I are sooner or later going to have to figure out the skill of what to choose. So uh, I want to ask you, not if you were grading yourself, if the, the five people who spend the most time with you during the week would give you a grade on your gratitude. <laughs> Someone said, please don't. That's a, that's a dangerous question, right? Because, man, it is so instinctual. It is so natural. It is so easy to be negative and to see what's wrong and to express our frustration. So how, how and why can we change that? Yeah, today we're going to try to answer that question and figure out how to become more grateful people. But before we get there, I want to motivate you with three reasons why. So if you're watching at home, if you're here in church, grab a pen. Let me give you three quick reasons to strive to become a more grateful person. All right, here's the first one. Because, first of all, being grateful is better for you. Choosing gratitude today is literally better for you. And here's why. Did you know that the way God wired your brain is that when you choose something today, whatever that something may be, it becomes a little bit easier to choose it again tomorrow? Right. We think of this often with um, substances, drugs, and alcohol. Like, if I choose it today, my brain's going to want it tomorrow. If I live without it today, it's going to be easier to resist tomorrow. The same thing, they say, is actually true for gratitude. There's a researcher from Columbia University named Angela Grice, and she said these words. The more you do something, the more entrenched that path becomes in your brain, and the more you continue to do it. In other words, when you're frustrated later today, if you just vent, and and no one would blame you because what you're going through is difficult, if you vent, what's going to be just a little bit easier to do tomorrow? The same thing. But if in the midst of that frustration, you can see the good part, the blessing, the hand of God, and you can offer up a prayer of thanks, guess what becomes easier tomorrow? Our brains are creatures of habit. and If you want to become a more grateful person, it's better to choose gratitude today. But it's not just better for you. Second answer, it's also better for them. Uh, Any of you here done online dating before? Yeah, a bunch of people. Uh, here in Wisconsin, when I meet couples, they either met at a bar or online. All right, so <laughs> that's a whole bunch of us. You ever, uh, if you've done online dating, have you ever scrolled through the profiles and come to a guy who leads with this, you know, grinning, beautiful picture of him, probably photoshopped, and the opening line that says, I'm a negative person. <laughs> I see the worst in everything. <laughs> I'm looking for a girl who will bring the sunshine because I got all the clouds and the rain. <laughs> I mean, no, we wouldn't, if we were trying to impress someone, we would never, ever say that. And why? Because people love gratitude. You and I literally have the power to change the temperature of any room we walk into. 
We can make people more hopeful, more happy, more peaceful, and more godly. Being a grateful person is not just good for our brains and for our tomorrows, but for their tomorrows too. And finally, number three, being grateful is better for him, for God. If our friends and family and neighbors who know that we're followers of God see us grumbling and venting and constantly frustrated, they might wonder, well, what's the benefit in being a Christian? But, (laughs) but if you can still praise God in the midst of the storm, if even, if it feels like there's a thorn in the side of your flesh, you confess his grace is sufficient for me, even if you're going through the same drama with your family or your kids or your work or or your body breaking down and you confess God is still good all the time, he is merciful, he, he treats me better than I deserve, then what will happen to people? They'll wonder, who who is this God? How good does your God have to be if you're praising him and thanking him for this day, which seems so broken and messed up? No, the truth is, it's not easy to be a thankful person, but it's better for you and for them and especially for him. That's why today I want to start a conversation with you about gratitude. Today and for the next few weeks, we are going to learn from one of the most grateful people in human history, a Christian who lived back in the first century named the Apostle Paul. If you're kind of new to the Bible, Paul was the guy who wrote almost all of the best stuff on gratitude. And starting today, we're going to learn how Paul did it. We're going to open up to four different sections of the Apostle Paul's teaching, and we're going to study his method and see if a month from now, you and I can become more grateful people who say no to grumbling and yes to gratitude. So, if you're ready for that journey, you have a Bible with you, or you just want to follow along in the screen, here's what the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. He wrote, We know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. When Paul reflected on the fact that he had messed so much up in his life, if you don't know, Paul had actually murdered Christians before he became one, and yet here Jesus came to forgive him and love him and accept him, And if that weren't enough grace and undeserved love, then God the Father raised Jesus from the dead on the third day. That's what we call Easter. And he conquered death so that no follower of Jesus ever has to be afraid to die. And if that weren't enough to make Thanksgiving overflow, did you catch it? Paul said, and this same God will raise us too. This is what some Christians call the resurrection of the dead. That's what you find in the Apostles' Creed or some of the songs that we sing in church, that we believe on the last day that Jesus who died for us and who was raised from the grave for us will come down from heaven to get us. And he'll transform our bodies and every ache, every pain, all the cancer, all the anxiety, all the depression, all the mental health struggles, all the pituitary glands, bad backs, aching hips, rheumatoid arthritis, all, all of it will forever and ever and ever be gone. And when Paul thought about that, that God's coming back for me and never, ever, ever again will I hurt or mourn or cry or grieve. What happened in his heart, even in the midst of all the something, was thanksgiving overflowed. Here are the last verses I want to share with you today. Verse 16, Paul continues, Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, Yet inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So, we fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen 
is eternal. He didn't say that life would be easy. How does he put it? Outwardly, we are wasting away. That sounds bad, right? And it is. But Paul just compared all of that to all of this. Compared to forever? (laughs) Compared to the glory of God, the eternal weight of it? This? (laughs) I mean, this would crush me if there was all this is. But this is light and this is momentary compared to that. Seeing the face of my God forever and ever and ever. If I was going to summarize Paul's teaching, I'd put it this way. I'd love for you to write this down. The big idea for today is this. Thank God for forever. Or if that's too much to write down, how about TGFF? <laughs> Thank God for forever. <laughs> Some people say TGIF, right? Thank God it's Friday. We, we're so grateful. We get two days off. But Paul said, no, I, I get more than two days. I, I get more than a year of chicken. I get forever in the presence of God. Thank God for forever. Uh, kind of reminds me of this. Um, some of you have seen me do this before and heard me teach this before. I actually stole this from another pastor in full disclosure. Uh, I didn't steal the rope from another pastor, but I stole the idea from another pastor. So, <laughs> yeah. Paul's saying, like, this little inch and a half of black tape at the end of this white rope is the life you're living right now. And Paul says you might feel like you're wasting away. And and that's true, and that's a burden, and that's difficult. But please do not forget, this isn't it. Like, even if the burden that you're carrying lasts for another year or two or ten or 40, even if your life compared to some other people on this earth seems unfair and difficult and challenging, even if every day as you try to go to bed, the worry and the anxiety and the fear is like a nightly battle, even if that never ends, you have a reason to be grateful. Because what God has promised you at your last breath or the day that Jesus comes back is not this. It's not another 70 years of goodness to balance it out. And he hasn't promised you this or this or this. I'm 6'2". What's that? 74 inches. God has not promised you 74 times the happiness for the pain that you've been through. He's promised you forever and ever and ever and ever. God has promised you happiness and he's promised you joy and he's promised you acceptance and he's promised you comfort. He's promised you his face, his presence, his beauty and his glory. The day that Jesus comes back, there will be no more crying or mourning or pain. There's no anxiety, no depression, no drama, no divorce. There's no abuse. You want me to keep going? Amazon said it was 150 feet, so I'm waiting. It's forever, and it's ever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever. Amazon's rope ran out, (laughs) but not forever with God, right? And and this is what Paul is saying to you. We get so fixated on this this tiny little drama that we're going through, but this is not what God sees. He, He sees forever. And if you could see it too, you wouldn't grumble. It's like a few raindrops the night before you wake up and you hear the sound and the good news is on the way. So I want to practice with you because in the next seven days, you're going to have something, all right? So what I'm going to do is describe a a bad situation you might find yourself in and then I'm going to say, but, and then you're going to say, this is the spot where you talk in church, okay? You're going to say, thank God for forever. All right, so I'm going to say a bad thing, but, and you say, thank God. Th- thank God for forever. Yeah, if you want to, you just can't say it like this, okay? You got to either say, thank God for forever, or with a relief, oh, thank God for forever. And we're going to think about the forever happiness we have with God. So some of you are facing some challenging times in school. The, the pressure of figuring out what you want to do for the rest of your life, the grades it takes, the money that you need, the homework and the drama, it it might seem laughable to your parents or grandparents, but for you, it's just a daily pressure you can't get past. And you thought it'd be so good, right, to move away from home and stay up as late as you want and eat whatever you want, but now you got bills 
and you got a manager that doesn't care, wants you to put your head down and do the job, and it's not a dream, and they're switching shifts, and you're not getting paid as much as you thought, and you just didn't realize how much mom and dad were covering for you, and now there's credit card debt, and when you get the notification and you open the app, you feel like you're always behind and you're never going to catch up, and you're stressed and you're anxious and you're afraid, but the kind of thing for forever, and your little brother, and your older sister, and your granddaughter who is not representing your family well. And your parents are fighting again, and they don't seem to get along. And you're not the perfect family, and you're not sure if you ever will be. And it's hard. But, but thank God for forever, right? And politics. <laughs> but, <laughs> thank God for forever, that's right. And uh, sometimes Pastor Mike, when he's up front in church, he talks for forever, but thank God for See what I did right there? Yeah. <laughs> See, I want you to remember that. So often when we grumble, we, we do this. But Paul did this, and he did this, and he did this. He fixed his eyes, not on what he could see, but what he couldn't. And because what is unseen is eternal, he had hope, and he didn't lose heart. Now, before I say amen, I want to speak really quickly to three groups of you. Uh, I want to speak to those of you who are not Christians. I want to speak to those of you who are young Christians. And then I want to speak to those of you who are old Christians. So, first of all, if you're not a Christian and you're here today, if your girlfriend brought you or you stumbled across this on TV or online, um, all, all I want to say to you is this. It's forever. I'm not sure why you're not a follower of Jesus. Um, maybe you had a bad experience growing up in church. Maybe you have some questions that no one's ever answered for you about the Bible or about God. Now, maybe your parents said they were Christian, but they were super hypocrites and you saw it up close. I, I don't know what your reasons are, but I, I do know this. Jesus is offering you forever. To be happy forever. <laughs> to never be worried or afraid. For Christianity is not just a club where we promise you a few tips and a few years of a better life. It's eternal life in the name of Jesus' Son. And so here's what, what I want to challenge you. Isn't that worth investigating? Like if you have questions about the hypocrisy of the church or about creation or evolution or existence of God or all the religions or why are there people like that? What do bad things happen to good people? Those are good questions. Isn't it worth investigating to, to reach out, to do more than Google, but to talk to someone who's thought this through and let's say it's totally wrong, but if it's right, it's forever. Second, to you young Christians here, um, who of you here today hasn't yet gotten their first wrinkle? Anyone? A couple of you, a bunch. I remember, remember those days. <laughs> um, can I tell you this? It's forever. When you hit your teenage years and your 20s and your 30s, you're going to face all the same opportunities and temptations that middle-aged guys like I did. There's going to be the job and the career, the dating, the family, maybe the kids, the diapers, the friends, the activities, the, the bar leagues, the everything. But I just want you to remember this. Jesus is offering you forever. There will be a hundred different opportunities to make something else besides Jesus the number one spot in your priorities and heart. But none of them offer you forever. The boss is going to say extra hours but extra pay and you know it's going to compromise your faith. You know you won't be able to make it to church. You'll be too exhausted to have time and energy and focus to open up your Bible. Your, your boss cannot offer you forever. And you might meet a guy and he's charming and he's funny and he's committed like so few guys out there in the world. But if he doesn't help you get closer to God, he, he can't offer you forever. 
I'm all about sports. I love playing them. I love watching them. But there is not a single game in my entire life that has offered me forever. And so I hope and I pray and I beg that you would not get hustled into thinking that temporary things are eternal and eternal things are temporary. Younger brothers and sisters in Christ, do not let anything get in the way of your forever. Jesus loves you. Finally, you old Christians, where are my wrinkly brothers and sisters in the faith? Get it proud. Yeah, the Bible says we have wisdom. Don't be ashamed of that. <laughs> um, older Christians, we're even closer to forever. Yeah, as we get older, and, and I get this, as our bodies start to hurt, as our sight starts to go, as hearing loss happens, as heart failure and issues with arthritis, it is so natural to grumble. But think about this. We are closer to forever. Like dying, the, the process is not fun, but death gives us forever. So let's turn the old folks Christian club into the most grateful group on earth. We're, we're one step closer to forever. Paul said, outwardly we are wasting away, but inwardly we are being renewed day by day by day. You might have wrinkles on your faith, but, but you can run the race of Jesus like an Olympic sprinter if you fix your eyes on eternity. You can have a kind of freshness of faith that puts a freshman to shame because you're looking at what they're not looking at. You're looking at forever. So as we get older, it might get harder as our body starts to ache and moan and groan, but let's remember what Paul remembered. Jesus is coming back for his people to present us with himself and it lasts forever. So whether you're not a Christian, a younger Christian, an older Christian, um, I hope that you can follow my daughter's example. My oldest daughter, Brooklyn, is a 12-year-old, and she has become a passionate lover slash maybe addict to Broadway musicals. Uh, during the coronavirus, when everything was going crazy and we were stuck at home, Brooklyn decided to write personal handwritten letters to all of her favorite Broadway singers. And then one day, what showed up in the mailbox? A letter from New York City. And who is it from? A cast member of the musical Hamilton. And not just a backup singer or a backup dancer, the supporting actor, the supporting actress. Guess who wrote my daughter a letter? Mr. Hamilton himself. <laughs> and my, my daughter was so happy. I think she was running laps around the house and we had to bring her in before it was time for dinner. She was so, so happy and it was so beautiful. It wasn't a stock letter and photo. He hand, like, wrote her a letter, answered the questions that she had. Crazy that he would do that for her. And Brooklyn framed it and she put it up in her bedroom, but she did not put it next to her bed. Because as amazing as that moment was, what's next to her bed is something eternally better. Right next to her clock is a little sign that says, let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love. For I have put my trust in you. <laughs> Mr. Hamilton is great, but he's temporary. The unfailing love of Jesus is forever. In a world where there's always something, thank God for forever. Let's pray. Uh, dear Jesus, thank you so much for giving us everything. Um, in this world, you said, you, you promised we would have trouble, but you have overcome this world. You said to two grieving sisters that the person who believes in you would live even if they die. And so I pray that you would make us grateful people. Uh, we had something today, we're going to have something tomorrow, but we have something so much better than all the somethings. We have you, we have eternity, we have heaven, we have the new earth, we have the resurrection of the dead and a glorious body. God, when we see the negative, when the glass feels half full, help us to remember forever. I pray today for every non-Christian hearing this message so that you would spark in them a, a bit of curiosity 
just to investigate, to humble themselves and ask the questions to someone who might know. Maybe it's the way that you'll change someone's forever. I pray for my own daughters and every young Christian here today. God, the world feels so important when we're in the midst of it. Volleyball feels like everything. Our job feels like everything. A relationship feels like everything. But compared to forever, it's nothing. Help them to remember that. Keep their eyes fixed on you that they could grow old with Jesus as their number one forever and ever. I pray in a grumbling world you would raise up more and more Christians who have this gratitude of the Apostle Paul. We, we need good examples, God. So make us those examples that we could inspire people and tell them that we have fixed our eyes on the one thing that endures forever. Lord, we give thanks to you today for you are good and your mercy endures forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Such a great reminder today from Pastor Mike, reminding us that everything we're going through right now pales in light of eternity. We're so excited about our resource this month. It's our 365-day daily devotional, Closer to God Each Day. This will help you get into God's Word to experience His presence. It's yours for your gift to Time of Grace. Just visit us at timeofgrace.org, write to us, or call the number on the screen. Through everything you face in life, stress and joy, confusion and gratitude, comfort and distress, look to the Lord and start building a habit of seeking Him with Closer to God Each Day, 365 daily devotions. This year-long devotional will help you build up your spiritual strength. A few moments can transform your day. A daily habit in God's Word can transform your life. Closer to God Each Day, 365 daily devotions is our way of thanking you for your financial support. Request yours today by calling 800-661-3311, visiting timeofgrace.org, or writing us at P.O. Box 301, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53201. Nothing matters more than connecting people to God like that anxious teenager scrolling on her phone who doesn't really know who Jesus is, or that family that might look good from a distance, but they're barely keeping it together, or that Christian going through chemo who needs to know that she is going to see the face of God. Nothing matters more than connecting people just like that to the God of forgiveness, love, and power. And that is exactly what Grace Partners do. Grace Partners give regularly and generously to Time of Grace. Join me today in becoming a Grace Partner. Time of Grace doesn't end here. Visit timeofgrace.org and explore encouraging resources or sign up for our daily email and have everything delivered right to your inbox. Like our Grace Moments devotions, Grace Talks devotional videos, blog, and podcasts. Follow us on social media where you'll find a supportive Christian community. Do you need prayer? Contact us and let us know what's on your heart. Thank you so much for your support. See you next week on Time of Grace.